head of the U.S. Border Patrol, Raul Ortiz, told lawmakers on Wednesday that the Department of Homeland Security does not have operational control of the U.S. southern border, according to Fox News. When asked if the DHS has operational control of the border at a House Homeland Security hearing earlier this week, Ortiz replied, no, sir. Chief Ortiz also said that migration levels were at crisis level in certain areas of the border. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas said last year that the Biden administration did have operational control of the border. Homeland Security Chairman Mark Green defined operational control in the U.S. as, quote, the prevention prevention of all unlawful entries into the United States, including entries by terrorists, other unlawful aliens, instruments of terrorism, narcotics and other contraband. So what did you make of this, Brianna? I mean, it, it by that definition, it does seem like a an almost impossible. <laughs> I mean, I don't think that there has ever been an ability to, or a, 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 a re, the reality that they've prevented all contraband, drugs, um, immigration over the border. Uh, so I understand there to be some difference between what's happening this year and last year, but it's hard for me to wrap my mind around the scope of it and the cause of it. So is this a consequence of um, policies that are going on in other parts of the world? Is this a consequence of American sanction re regimes in countries like Venezuela that have driven immigration levels in the past? Is this a consequence of the ongoing, you know, um, uh, economic crisis as a fallout from COVID that is affecting other countries? Is it a consequence of drug wars that are going on in other countries that, of course, also have some U.S. involvement and tie-in? Is this a consequence of insufficient funding for Border Patrol officers or uh, people quitting the job because of other kinds of um, job pressures, quality of life issues, et cetera? It's difficult to know without more what can actually be done to address the crisis to the extent that there has been some kind of obviously meaningful change in the status of border security from this year to last. What do you what do you make of it? Well, I think we know what works because it, um, under President Trump, th th this was not an issue that we had um, just the 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 just astronomical levels of people crossing the border, people crossing the border and then telling reporters, Biden told us we could come. Biden told us that the border is open, right? I mean, just I've seen, you know, t tens, if not hundreds of videos like that of people just freely saying, you know, the cartels clearly took that message home from the Biden administration, removing all of the very effective Trump era policies, which now, of course, President Biden is considering reinstating everything from um, family detention uh, to remain in Mexico um, to, of course, they fought Title 42. But then when a judge when 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 a judge ordered them to keep it in place, they expanded it. Right. So so the Biden administration knows very well what works, because when they start to feel the political heat to do something, they go right back to President Trump's playbook um, and and. I think that's really what what we're going to start seeing over the next few months. Um, so, you know, and if you talk to Border Patrol officers, I mean, that, that's what they'll tell you as well, that it's a free for all. There's just so many people crossing and the cartels have gotten so good at using people crossing in one location to then, you know, tra traffic in, in, in drugs, traffic in children, traffic in people on, in another location, that it really does feel like there is something significantly different happening at the border now than than before. There's been a lot of pushback against Joe Biden's plan to reintroduce family separation. It was obviously deeply unpopular, and many people point to it as part of why Donald Trump lost in 2016. Do you think it's politically advantageous for Joe Biden to go back to the policy of fam separating immigrant families from their children as they cross the border? Well, we know from the New York Times reporting recently about children who have crossed the border illegally unaccompanied and then been put to work as slaves um, to the cartels, essentially, to pay off a debt and send money back home, um, that a lot of these children are brought by people who are not family members. Um, uh, caseworkers estimate that of the 250,000 unaccompanied children who have crossed the border over the, since Joe Biden became president, that um, up to two thirds of them are employed full time. So we know that these are not a lot of them are, are crossing either by themselves or um, with people who are claiming to be family members, but who are not family members or people who are family members who are perfectly willing to have their children work as slaves for cartels. So I, I really think that a lot of what's happening at the border right now um, is causing people to rethink how we judged um, a lot of what President Trump did, because, you know, it seemed so cruel at the time. But the unimaginable cruelty that get, getting rid of all of these policies has engendered is astonishing to me anyway, the idea of these kids. I mean, kids working full time in the kinds of jobs that we as a society have deemed unsafe for children 
decades and decades and decades ago. Um, it's really horrifying. I mean, and we know again, like we know that one third of the women who make that journey admit to being raped, right? So you can imagine, only imagine what the actual number is. Children being sent on birth control to make this journey, it, 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 the horror of it all. And we know what worked to to stop it. And we know what happened when President Biden took office and 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 basically encouraged this. So I, I feel very strongly that it's time for a reckoning on this front and, and for a reevaluation. So I completely agree that it's horrible that child labor is a scourge that we were supposed to have left back in, you know, the Dickensian era. And that's why it's so deeply cruel and disturbing that Republican lawmakers across the United States of America have been trying so assiduously to weaken child labor laws and put kids back to work. I did a radar on this a couple of weeks ago um, where, you know, conservatives are defending the idea of sending kids not just to work, framing it as these like summer jobs, but sending them to meatpacking plants and some of the most dangerous working conditions that we have for adults in the United States of America. And it's it's really curious why there has this been, been this decision across the country to weaken labor laws in this way, particularly I was talking about a series of laws that were being put into place or advocated for by Republican lawmakers in Iowa. But I think that we can all agree, at least here in this conversation, that child labor is a problem. And certainly it's not the case that the majority of people who were separated from their families, the kids that were separated from their families, that, that shocked the conscience of America and led to 60 percent of Americans disapproving of Donald Trump's child separation policy, the, the call of kids in cages, was very influential and realigning people um, against the, the, the Trump administration back in 2020, for better or for worse. So now this is the question. If we can both concede that, obviously, to the extent that kids are not actually with their families, that doesn't qualify as child family separation, should the Trump should the Biden administration and readopt the Trump policies of actually separating families from their children at the border, as it seems that Biden is planning to do? Well, so what he's pl actually planning to do, and I could be wrong about this, my, and also he hasn't yet admitted it, right? This was New York yeah, Times he reporting. Has, but he hasn't actually, admitted it, although there's been a number of high-profile right. Democrats, including right. people who are usually supportive of him, like um, uh, Beto O'Rourke and Julian Castro have come yeah. out against preemptively Biden doing um, this, yeah. Right. But so the plan is not family separation, but family detention. So um, the, the law that was in place was that you can't detain families. Right. If, if they come with children, they have to be released into the U.S. So, you know, the kids in cages was, first of all, obviously started under o President Obama. Mm -hmm. But that was about, you know, just children themselves, whether they can be detained um, and what what. Um, so so it's there. He's not contemplating family separation. He's contemplating family detention. Right. It used to be if you come with a child, you can be guaranteed entry. And so he's he's sort of contemplating family detention. So we're, we're not quite at the place where we have to ask that answer that question. But I, I, I would, you know, I, I do think that it is time to reevaluate how we spoke about President Trump and immigration, given the just unbelievable cruelty that the, this sort of more, quote unquote, compassionate approach has has engendered. Yeah. Well, is it is it is it that both are cruel? Because people have, I think, Riley also pointed to the fact that I mean, family, actual family separation has continued under Biden as well. So the, the question to me isn't it, are we being we were really too too hard on Trump. It's are we being too soft on Biden? Because right. if, if Trump era policies are continuing, if if they were frankly continued even before this moment where we're talking about these specific title for well we've been talking about title forty two for a long time, but these uh, family separation policies in particular. If, if much of that has been ongoing under the Biden administration, my concern has been always that Biden simply allows liberals to go back to brunch and ignore the things that they purported to care about <laughs> under Donald Trump. So I do agree that a lot of the crit critiques that were, happened under Donald Trump were made in bad faith by people who didn't really care. But that doesn't really mm -hmm. get to the bottom of the moral issue of whether or not, if you really do care about these things, returning to those kinds of policies, one, work. Because there are a lot of external factors that are at play. You mentioned um, uh, the idea that more immigrants are coming because Joe Biden says, come, allegedly. Kamala Harris very famously said, do not come. Is that supposed to not have that, this magical talismanic effect on immigrants and their ability or their willingness to take these treks to come to America? That just all strikes me as a, a, a too easy and rather simplistic explanation of what our incredible global trends happening right now and economic crises happening right now that are driving and have always driven immigration. And I worry that responding with increased border cruelty so far under Trump or Biden hasn't resulted in actually diminishing the number of people who immigrate, or more importantly, diminishing the feeling of need for people to leave their own countries where they would obviously much prefer to be. 
Well, we know the. I mean, the numbers were much lower under Trump, and of course, family separation did immediately um, staunch the flow of people coming with children and unaccompanied minors as well. So it was extremely effective. The question is, you know, are we willing to pay that price? And I think right now a lot of Americans are reconsidering that. We know even Democrats now are, you know, polls are showing that they are appalled at the level of, you know, disorder at the border, um, you know, such that you're even having, you know, um, Border Patrol, the head of Border Patrol admitting that we do not have operational control of the border. I mean, while you're right, it's true. If, if total control is what operational control means, we've probably never had it. I can't recall another person ever admitting before that we've totally lost it. I mean, talk about telegraphing to the cartels that it's, you know, that, that, you know, open borders. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. I, I, I don't, it's what's so funny about this border conversation is that historically open borders has been a conservative position. A hundred percent. And right. I, Democrats have never, like, I don't even like Democrats. I don't think that anybody has a, a actual immigration policy, to be honest. People just pick things that seem to signal, I don't like this, so I'm going to do something more draconian. And then there's, there's an arms race for who can throw policies at this, where you see Donald Trump and Joe Biden offering the exact same things. And trends ebb and flow based on other aspects happening globally. And we have had this whole like now 10 minute conversation without addressing what is what a single factor that could be driving edu uh, driving immigration, except for apparently Joe Biden getting on TV, which never happened, saying the borders are open, please come to America. And so that's, that's well, what's I, disturbing I to me because, I mean, do we, do we care about, I mean, if you talk to immigrants, as, as you mentioned before, they say that they would prefer to be able to earn an income in their own country where they don't have to learn a new language, where they don't have to uproot their family, where they don't have to go through this horrific trial of walking, you know, and, and experiencing sexual assault and all of these things that you're describing. And, and having that kind of a common sense approach to it, it seems to me clear that there has to be a, a, a significant harm that you are trying to escape in order to undergo that kind of a, well, a, of a journey, I mean, right? I, I, I would be totally happy to say, look, we need to be investing in our neighbors because otherwise our neighbors are going to come here. Just like if the median income in Canada was 20 20 percent higher than it is here, we'd probably all be making a rush on that border as well. I, I, that makes perfect sense to me. These are human beings. And I actually feel that it is, you know, they are our neighbors. Their problems are our problems. And I'm happy to spend that money, you know, a, as an investment in those nations. Um, I think I stand where Bernie Sanders stood in 2015 when he said that open borders is a Koch brothers proposal. And if you care about a wage floor and you care about the American working class, which everybody should, you have to care about having a strong border. I mean, that that he could not have put it any better. And I keep coming back to that. And and I think about that a lot. I think he was totally right. Yeah, I think my, my concern isn't with that at all. My concern is that there have been these abridgments to these fundamental immigration policies that made America what it was, like a right to asylum. So in, in order, because of the perception of there being a crisis, to say we're suddenly going to get rid of these fundamental rights that say, well, if you are the victim of a persecution or sexual assault or assault because of your gender identity or these kinds of things, your, your religion, you know, something, some, one of those kinds of factors, that you are allowed to plead your case and come to America for asylum. That's why we have the Statue of Liberty as, as exactly a beacon that's supposed to be symbolizing that. And so when you see a d diminishment of those kind of policies because people are so afraid of the consequences of immigration, that's my problem. I don't think that anyone is really arguing that whatever support needs to happen at the border needs to happen. The question is whether or not throwing money at the border, putting big shipping crates at the border, as some Republican, uh, Republicans uh, have advocated for and have done, is actually going to address the problem when we're all missing the forest for the trees. And I think you're completely right. Investing, more conversation about investing in not investing in other countries, but also just lifting sanctions that are making life very difficult in other countries could go a Definitely. lot farther, I think, than um, doing things that frankly compromise the integrity of our own country uh, and our own laws that we're very proud of in, in the asylum context and stuff like that. So I think I, I agree with you there 100 percent. Yeah, well, we yeah. could probably talk about this all day long, but we're going to have to leave it at that because we have more rising right after this. <laughs> 